YouTube, what's going on? Trey back again, hit you with a video. Now this video right here is a response to the 21 questions video that I asked you all to write down or get submit 21 questions and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Now I was going to wait and do the video for, uh, I think I uploaded that video, was it Wednesday or Tuesday? Probably was Tuesday. But I was going to wait to next Tuesday, next Tuesday to answer them, but I will go ahead and answer it now and that's the way I would do it. I'll just upload it like on a uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. I have to go back and check and see which day the video was. It was the 19th, so I think that was Wednesday, I think. I'm not sure. It might be Tuesday. Anyway, so uh I would do that once a week and and whoever don't get their questions answered, you know, we'll just have to start over for the next week because there's so many, you know, different uh questions being asked and I just, you know, pick and choose which one is not necessarily who is who or who is what as long as you have a real name or i think it's a real name and you have uh at least a picture because i hate talking to you know people who i can't even get a visualization of how they look or anything else but anyway here's the uh my response to those questions and question one is from nawalt black swan and real name lisa it says no the last show here's my question is a woman that's a uh single mother a deal breaker when it comes to long-term relationship or marriage for you well not necessarily because as long as her kids are respectable and of course you don't have you know a ton of them because i can't take care of a ton of kids so you know you know two you know pushing it three got to really be some love that i really got to love you uh you know feel you and you know be in tune with you but yeah um uh, I could deal with one or two, you know, it just, when it gets over two, it's a little harder, you know, especially if they ask a bad and you can't really tell them nothing. So, uh, personally, no, a uh, single mother would not be a deal breaker for me when it comes to if I want to be in a relationship with them. It just depends on how I feel about the person and also if their kids are raised properly. So I hope that answer your question also. And thank you, Lisa, for the question. Number two, Emily Wright. Hello, Trey. Well, this is my real name. I think this is really... A, this is a really great idea. I see a lot of doing this. My question is, what is it like living in the USA? Cars are cheaper. Food is cheaper. Do you guys face a lot of racism over there? That's more than one question. Yes, it is. But maybe one overall answer as to the quality of life living in the USA. Thanks, Trey. X. Well, Emily, to be honest with you, what is life like living in the USA? It is great sometimes. You know, one thing that I come to understand in living in this world is that it's not going to be heaven nowhere you go on this earth. It's not going to be, you know, complete peace and paradise no matter where you go. Uh, no matter even even if you go on an island somewhere, you know, a hurricane might come through there and destroy your little piece of heaven. So, you know, I just take the good with the bad. That's what I have learned. You know, just take the good with the bad. And also, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't rather stay nowhere else but the United States of America. I love America. But, you know, sometimes not only me, but we as people feel that America don't love us in return. So I hope that answers your question. But, yes, you know, no matter where you go, you're going to have problems in life. And that's what we as people have to understand. It's not the land because this land is no different than another land. The only thing that's different is the resources and the minerals underneath it. But... The people is what make it different and what make life complicated. Not the area of the world. It's the people in it. And are the cars cheaper? Uh, I doubt it. Uh, you know, it depends on what kind of car you're going to get. And is the food cheaper? Hell no. Because only the thing cheaper is the, is the food that don't mean you any good. You know, the food that's going to basically give you cancer, give you ulcers, and just, you know, shorten your lifespan. And do you guys face a lot of racism over there? Hell yeah. From the beginning, that's how uh, this land became what it is. You know, it was it was conquered, you know. So, yes, it's, it's a lot of racism. It was built off of racism, and it's still going on to this day because, you know, the way you start, it's the way you're going to finish, you know. So think about that also, and I hope that answers your question, Emily Wright, and thank you for asking. Number three, Paula Banks. What do you think of Kanika Jenkins' case in Chicago? Well, I think it's a big cover-up. I think it's a big fluke. I think it's a hoax. I think somebody actually died, but they're not releasing the proper information like they should because if they would, they wouldn't be playing games with us with the video showing us different footages of some girl who's clearly way bigger than Kanika walking down a damn hallway. 
staggering everywhere. And I ain't never seen no drunk person stagger. They, they go back and forth like they like they about to bust out and start doing a wop for those who, you know, a little old school and know about the wop and the cabbage patch and all that. So, you know, I believe the whole story is just a hoax. I believe it's a huge distraction because around that time, it was an 8.1 earthquake in mexico and around that t time you know you had a little small tremors here in california you got wildfires raging everywhere so we have to be aware of that also now it's a good thing that the outpouring of love and concern that people showed for the young sister kanika you know trying to figure out what happened that was a great thing but at the same time we have to be aware of when they start trying to trick us and throwing us you know different uh taking us down different trails if you will showing us what this video was another video then all of a sudden the video don't exist but the the activist said that he seen the video so like i said from the jump it was all a lie the activist was a lie even though a lot of people turned around and said i was hating on the man and i was a lie but yeah it is a very bad situation with this uh female what happened to her but that's my thoughts when i believe it's just a bunch of mess and that everybody involved is lying everybody is lying from from uh, the sister on down and i don't care who don't like it that's the truth because somebody is not telling the truth. You know, everybody's saying something different. The sister's saying something different. The mom's saying something different. These activists, these so-called activists, saying things different. <clears throat> and also the hotel saying something different. Police saying something different. So, you know, we just basically like a, a dog chasing our tail. We just don't keep going in circles, you know. But they know what happened. And I hope to answer your question, uh, Paula Banks, and thank you. Number four, uh, Teresa Samuel. Hmm, what attracts you the most in a woman? Uh, what attracts me the most, that's real simple, is uh, loyalty. Loyalty, uh, a woman that has self-respect for herself, a woman that carries herself, not like she's the shit, but knowing that she's the shit, it's different, you know, you don't walk around like, yo, uh, how can I say this without sounding so rude and nasty, well, let me put it this way, you don't walk around like your shit don't stink, you basically a down-to-earth person, we all have our flaws, but you know, if you're a good person and you come from a good space and you try to be righteous in all your endeavors, sometimes we're going to mess up and slip, but that's what it's about growing as a human being. You know, you, you, you try to change things up because you don't want to just come through this world being stagnant and not being able to grow and develop. You're going to repeat this whole cycle again. That's the way it works. You know, it's one big recycling bin, but uh, loyalty and intelligence, you know, and, you know, just being a humble person. That what really attracts me the most, a humble person, you know, no matter if you know that you're the beautiful, uh, uh, the most prettiest woman around, you know, you're still humble. You still carry yourself just like anybody else, you know, that that what uh, I like the most. Anyway, thanks, Teresa Samuel, for that question. Number five, Diane Delina. Hope I got your last name right. Nice new direction, Trey. Question, do you at times become overwhelmed with producing the quantity and quality of videos you create? In addition to feeling somewhat obligated to respond to all the comments. Sometimes I do. It just depends. You know, it's just like going to, it's just like when I go to my job, it's just like you going to your job. It's just like doing anything. And like some days you're going to feel great about it. Sometimes you're not going to feel so great about it. But what inspires me, what inspires me the most is the fact that, uh, you know, the subscribers, uh, followers, who I don't call followers or subscribers, just say family, you know, because you know, I just don't believe in saying somebody follow me. You know, I don't I don't too much like that word. You only should follow one person and we all know who that is. I don't I don't have to say his or her name. But it does get overwhelming sometimes because you just don't want to come on here and just say anything like a lot of people, you know, you wanna switch it up, you wanna be able to talk about this topic one day, you wanna be able to talk about that topic. You know, I don't want my channel to be just one one uh platform, just just uh bashing this thing or talking about police no i want to talk about it all let's talk about it all that's why it's called everyday talk blogs and vlogs you know comedy news or what have you relationship advice you know that's pretty much what i'm concerned but yeah some days it does be hard some days i can't wait to get up and do it you know and those be the best days that's when i perform the best you know words just flow and once i sit down you know it just comes natural it's nothing to it but anyway um about the comments responding to the comments yes uh that does get overwhelming because a lot of people are like, well, why don't you respond to the comments? It's hard to respond to comments when you're getting 2,000 comments a day. Then uh, sometimes more than that. And it's going to be more than that later on if, if the Lord say the same. But, yeah, it does get overwhelming. So I have to just do what I can do because, you know, I have a life and I have uh, things of my own that I do outside of this. You know, there's just one little small portion of it. But uh, it does get overwhelming sometimes. But the love that I have, you know, for it, 
it makes it all worthwhile. You know, just to know that uh, I wish we had this when I was coming up, you know, we could have these platforms to share ideas and everything like that. Maybe a lot of us would have did better in, uh, in life. Not saying that we still came and we didn't, but if we would have had a lot of this when we was coming up, you know, like young kids, a lot of us would have been a lot more better, you know. So I hope that answered your question, Diane, Delina, and thanks for the comment. Number six, Shay Adu, Shayla, what is your ultimate goal, purpose when it comes to YouTube? And I love how you articulate your words. You talk straight through, barely messing up. Well, my ultimate goal is to reach as many people as I can and just let them know, you know, life can be simple. And it also can be hard, but it's only going to be whatever you make it. Just like the Mary J. Blige song, uh, uh, Be Happy. Life going to only be what, only what you make it. When you're, uh, when you're going through it, you should never fake it. You know, something like that. I ain't trying to sing a song. I'm making a point. Is the fact is, you know, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. But at the same time, grow from that. Grow through it. Because you have certain people in the world that every little single thing that happened get them down. And they stay down. They don't ever know how to get back up. So I not only want to uplift people. I also want to make them laugh. I also want to give them a little encouragement. Because that's what we're missing a lot. You know, everything is just so negative or so direct driven. You know, you got people basically telling you, how to live and how to think, who you should be with, who you shouldn't be with. Uh, if this person ain't got this, they ain't nothing. If this person ain't got that, they ain't nothing. You know, I don't want to do that. I'm just trying to uh, give my uh, truth, my opinion. And hopefully people, you know, can take what they can from there. Just like eating fish. You take what you can consume and you spit out the bones. What you don't need, you just spit it out. But I'm sure we all can learn a lot from each other and learn from babies, you know. So that's my goal, just to uh, just to uplift people. And let them know a lot of this is that what you're thinking and that we see on TV is all hype. Don't believe the hype, you know. But anyway, I hope that answers your questions right there. And uh, the reason why I talk through sometimes while barely messing up is because it comes from a special place called my heart. That's the reason why. Because I mean what I say and I say what I mean. So thank you, uh, Shay. I do. Shayla. And God bless you for that. Uh, Charisse. Number seven. Charisse. Moment. I hope I said your name right. When are you going to do a live stream? No delay show. Beautiful start. Um, well, I've been trying to get one up. Uh, I'm basically having a lot of trouble with my encoder because I had to uh, switch some parts out on my iMac. Basically trying to upgrade it, you know, trying to upgrade my hard drive and my graphics card and everything else. But dealing with these iMacs, it's certain procedures. It's not like a Windows computer where you have a tower. You slip one thing in, you slip one thing in there. These Macs is totally different, you know. But uh, that's the reason for the holder. But I'm trying to get that worked on also, and it will be done soon. So thank you very much for the uh, for the question about when would I do a live screen? Because I can't wait to do a live screen. I want to have people call in. I want the people to be able to see their face and also, you know, the chat room. And we'll 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 get there slowly but surely. We'll get there. Thanks for the uh, question. Number eight, Josephine Smith. Do you believe that the economy is likely to crash similar to Venezuela like some people are saying? Josephine, yes. Yes, most definitely. Not only the economy here, but it's going to be a worldwide collapse because it just can't collapse in one area. It has to collapse everywhere, but it's going to be one little section at a time, you know. But, yeah, it's destined to happen. It's destined to happen because um, the economy is built on, I mean, no, American economy is built on fiat dollars, which means we basically print our money out of thin air and we don't have anything to back it we're supposed to have gold in the federal reserve but come to find out there isn't no gold in the federal reserve because it all been hauled off to the vatican and to europe but let me not talk too much though because some people are like well you know all that because i study i study that's why i know that but at the same time yeah it's going to collapse because it's not backed by anything you see the way uh commerce supposed to be when you interact with people for as economy you're supposed to have Basically, what you need is a barter system where if I can cut hair and you can do and you can uh, fix a car Well, look, I cut your hair whenever you want it and you just work on my car whenever it, it get messed up or where whereas I grow crops and you can make clothes whenever you need food You can come get some whenever I need clothes. I can come get that. That's the way it's supposed to be We really aren't supposed to operate under a cash society because that's how it's so corrupt right now Because that's why people have more and some people have what less so anytime you have a system built like that, you're always going to have 1% of people having the most and the rest having nothing. That's the way the world is today. So, yes, it's destined to collapse. And thank you for your question, uh, Josephine Smith. Number nine, Kara Snowden. 
So Trey, are there any good men left? Kara from Texas. Yes, it's some good men left. Uh, few and far in between. But at the same time, it depends on where you're looking. And also, if that's in uh, the most high will for you. Because let me tell you something. Everybody's not going to find uh, their soulmate here. Even though there is a person for you. You know, it depends on what you go through in life. And everybody's not going to be able to settle down and be with one person. That's why so many people get married more than one or two times. Some people three and four times. You know, and no shot at them. But at the same time, you know, we all eat, we all here for a different reason. But yeah, there is some, there is some good men left. You, we just, you just have to know how to find them. You know, you know how you got to know how to distinguish the real from the fake. And if you can do that, you will find you a good person. You know, I just believe in uh, testing people in a way, test their loyalty because uh, I, me personally, you can people can do what they want to do, but me personally, I can't have nobody around me if. I can't trust them and the only way I know I can trust them if they have if I have tested them or done seen them in action because I can tell you a lot of things I can tell you I know how to cut hair and fix a car but guess what when it's time for me to do that and I can't perform what good am I so yes there is some good men left but you have to be aware of them and who they are it's just not in church and stuff because trust me a church some of these churches full of a lot of demons it's not no way to bash the church because just like you got good churches you got bad churches you just you just got to know how to distinguish the person individually i hope to answer your question and thanks again carol snowden number 10 virginia white trey what's the name of the song on your intro and who sings it that right there is a gospel song name uh called pour out your spirit sung by brian samuel and marvin samuel of uh, the samuel brothers very talented group and uh I'm going to have them on a show later on at one time. And they basically sung that song. A lot of people say that's the Osley Brothers. No, that's not. That's a song that's produced. That's uh, it's what Slash produced uh, by me and also by uh, Brian and Marvin, which are brothers. And they're both singing that song. Brian sings in the beginning, playing an instrument. Marvin comes on the second verse. But anyway, that's who they are. Very uh, talented guys, you know. Can out sing anybody, you know. I know uh, Marvin can. Brian just good at, with instruments, but that's that's who it is. Cause I hear a lot of people saying, "Is that one Ronna Osley?" No, no, it's not. <laughs> Ronna Osley's not finna sue me. Anyway, number eleven, Susie Katz, twelve. Okay, okay, here go her name. Hello, my name is Nell, and I live in Northern California. I don't know how you do it. Not only do you post videos daily and sometimes on the weekends. But you respond to some of the comments. Do you personally respond to comments or do you have crew or staff assisting you? No, I respond to everybody individually myself. When I have time, sometimes I have to make time while I'm on my job and everything. I have to sit there and take out time, you know, because I'm passionate about what I do because I don't believe in wasting my time because I can spend my time doing so many other things. So, yes, I have um, respond to everyone myself. Now, I have people offering to help me, but I'm like, can't nobody speak for me better than me now? If it gets big and I can't, you know, keep up and it's just too too overwhelming, yes, I might will hire a person or two to assist me in responding to comments. But for now and for us to pass, I've been doing it all myself. So all those are my words. That's why they're all consistent, you know. But anyway, I hope that answers your question. And yes, uh, I do it whenever I'm, I get inspired. It's, it's to me, it's every day is the same. Because uh, Saturday and Sunday to me is no different than a Monday or Tuesday. It's all in our mind. We the one gave these dates titles, you know, and you have to just rise above this. And once you understand what it is, you're like, okay, you know, it, 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 it's no difference. Because when Saturday comes, do we stop using the bathroom? When Sunday comes, do we stop eating? You know, no, every day is the same. It all repeats. It's all recycled. That's how it is. So thanks for your uh, question. I know what you meant by the weekend thing. A lot of people take off and they don't work. So I'm not trying to be funny, but. You know, to me, whenever I feel it, I got to get it out. I hope to answer your question, uh, Nell, and thanks again. Number 12, Danny Hayes. My name is Unique, or you can call me Danielle, whichever is best for you to pronounce. So my question for you is, are you really an empath? Since on Twitter, on, since on your Twitter introduction, say so. If so, how has it affected your life so far? I love your channel, and you're really funny. Thank you for thank you answering, and God bless you. Uh, well, I knew ever since I was a little kid. Uh, that I was an empath because, you know, when people hurt, I hurt. When I, when I see stuff on TV, it affects me. You know, I stop eating a lot of food just because, you know, I think about the animal. I don't know why. It's just strange. Like if I'm eating a hamburger, 
sometimes I picture a cow and I'll throw up. If I mean, like when I used to eat a lot of pork, pork chops and stuff, I think about a pig. Because you got to understand, a pig is small, smart, smart as a dog. You know, a pig is not no dumb animal. And you really don't supposed to kill none of the animals, but you damn sure don't supposed to kill one that is smart. See, people don't understand that a pig, the way pigs operate, and I'm not trying to give you no whole history lesson on pigs, but to make the story simple, my point is this. Pigs have a system just like uh, human beings do for us. A mom, dad, children, they play their roles. Pigs operate the same way, so they're intelligent creatures. You know, a lot of creatures don't operate like that. And they all submit to the uh, the head male pig. Even the mom do. Even the little piglets. They all submit and they operate within that unit. You know, so you really don't supposed to kill the animals. Even though some people say, well, it's good, bacon good. Yeah, it's good. Until you get uh, <laughs> clogged up arteries and everything. But it affects me because, you know, I'm, you know, everybody different. You know, we all here for a different purpose and different reason. But, you know, it just, it, it really does something to me when I see people getting hurt doing, you know, when people messing over people. I guess that's why I speak the way I speak and stand for what I stand for. Because, you know, it's really sad that we can't really just come to grips of why we really here. You know, these few years that we have, which is might be 40 years, some of us. Some of us might be 20. Some of us might be 60, 70, 80, or 90. But one day, you know, just like that light switch got cut on, it's going to get cut off one day. You know, so I think about all that. Then I think about um, people that starving and stuff. Then, it, you know, it makes me cry. It makes me hurt sometimes because I'm like, why is there so much pain in this world? And I believe that the reason why I feel this pain because it was meant for me to feel this pain, you know, because, you know, I don't believe God would let me experience these feelings I'm having if it wasn't for a reason, if it wasn't for something, you know, so... I can feel when other people hurting. I can uh even if I don't talk to the person, I can just, you know, think about it and it just come to me and I call them on the phone and like, I'm so glad you called. You know, I'm going through this, you know, I'm and I'm like, okay, well, you know, I try to check on, you know, because that's just what I've been doing my whole life was checking on my cousins. Sometimes I know when they lying, when they done got into it with their boyfriends or, you know, whatever, you know. But it does affect me in a lot. It makes me, uh, sometimes I get sick so much. So I sometimes have to just get away. You know, I just have to get away from everybody because it drains you, you know, because you, you, you feel their pain. You feel their hurt. You, you feel everything. So I hope to answer your question. But yes, I always knew it ever since I was a little kid because I always felt the same way. And uh, thank you again to uh, Danny Hayes, Unique, for that question right there, which is a very good question. Number 13, flaw flawfully awesome. Hello, Trey. I'm Val. I enjoy your channel. You keep me laughing so hard to choose one question. I was wondering, what do you think about this September 23rd ordeal, if you have an opinion about it at all? Well, today is September 23rd, and guess what? I don't feel no way different than I felt after uh, Y2K, for those who remember that, uh, the year 2000. You know, January the 1st, 2000, when everybody said the world was going to end then. Then I don't feel no different than 2012, when they said the world is going to end. Even made a movie called 2012, so... All of this is just fear tactics. Basically, to have you like Chicken Little, because Chicken Little thought the sky was going to fall and everything. You know, just like we all thought the sky was going to fall. Not not realizing, not really realizing that you're living under a firmament. You're protected, <laughs> you know. But some kind of way, this enemy done slipped in and convinced people, oh, uh, Nibiru going to crash into the earth. The the, the sun going to hit the earth. The, uh, uh, Astro War is going to do all this. How in the hell is that going to happen when you're living up under a firmament? Firmament, I mean. Look in Genesis. As above, so below. You know, it's water below us and it's water above us. You can't get in, you can't get out. There's only one way out of here, and that's death. You know, and, and it's damn sure ain't no asteroid or no other planet colliding with this planet. Do you think, do you think this divine order would have this perfect creation here unless some outside force come destroy it? What would be the purpose of that? What would be the purpose of that? You know, think about that right there. It's all fear tactics. It's all fear tactics. And the way they do it, they put it in movies. The cartoons, the Simpsons, one of their favorite ones, they do it. And they also do it in American Dad. But you have to be aware of that also. It's all fear tactics to keep you in fear. Because when you have fear in you, that's a part of you that's being lost. That's a, that's a part of you that cannot be reached. That's a part of you that is not operating properly because you're operating on a lower level, which is fear. Love is the highest level. You know, that's why people that have more love and joy in their heart, you know, they operate at a higher frequency because that's a higher frequency in a person. It takes more for a person to 
speak certain things instead of just coming on jabbering off anything that's why you can have anybody come on and uh rap about killing people selling drugs and doing all this and also it's very few people that can come out and make a same song about living right you know it's very few but it's more that can do it negative but it's less that can do it right and i hope to answer your question also because uh this whole 23rd ordeal basically just got people just like y2k just like 2012 and it's going to be something else after this because you want to we looking up when we should be looking within you know because nothing is going to crack this damn ceiling this this uh this uh this this glass ball that we in you remember with uh, christmas not not at christmas but like if you go to your grandparents house they don't hardly sell them no more but they just had these little uh balls or santa claus or whatever and it wasn't a whole little glass ball it was like it was just like this but it had like a dome like a super dome and had like little snow and water that's the same thing that we're living under you know that's why you know they make that because they know that we don't know that so they put these uh these how can I say this? They put these stories out there to keep the masses of people in fear of running around chasing their tail. Because that's how you control the world. You control the people through fear, basically. So I hope to answer your question. And thanks again, Val, for your answer. Number 14, Trey. For, oh, number 14, David S. My boy David, what's up? Trey, how do you feel about Trump getting a possible second term as president? David from London. To be honest with you, David, I don't give a damn about Trump getting no uh, second term. Trump can get a third or fourth term for all I care because I do remember we had a Barack Obama. I do remember we had a George Bush who didn't do a damn thing but just messed it up even worse. I do remember we had a silly Bill Clinton up in there who didn't do a damn thing. And I also remember before him we had George Bush Sr., you know, and also before him, we had run away Reagan. So in America, we've been getting screwed over so much. Isn't this why you can't find too much KY jelly in these stores over here no more? I don't know how it is in the UK or wherever, but over here, we've been getting screwed so long till I don't care who the president is. Because guess what? The same thing is going to happen regardless because the president is just the, pu the puppet, the spokesman. He don't run nothing. You know, he just he just the one that's uh the spokesman for the company. But the real CEO sit up top and you don't ever see them because they... You know, they, 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 they hidden, you know, so it don't matter if Trump get uh, elected again. You know, they got us more worried about Trump than, than about the stuff that's really happening. We focused on the man instead of the issues that's going on. You see what I'm saying? So I hope that uh, reach you right there. And thanks again, David, uh, for the question. Number 15, Stephanie Pinkleton. What are some things you learned the hard way that you would advise others to look out to, to avoid or look out for in life, business, relationships, or whatever comes to mind. My name is what it says. Thanks, Trey. Okay, Stephanie. Some things I'll tell people to avoid is avoid fake people. Avoid people who act like they love you and who don't give a damn about you. Avoid fake family members who only come around when they need a handout. Avoid people who never had nothing good to say about you. Avoid people when you have good news and you walk in there telling about your good news, they ain't excited for you or nothing. You need to just turn around, and walk on out. Avoid all those type of people. Avoid uh, women who want to use you for money just because they look a certain way or they got big breasts or a big booty. Even though you are a female, I'm talking to the guys on that end. But also, you can reverse it and use it as a metaphor for guys. Also, avoid just avoid certain people. You know, avoid the fake. If you're gonna if you're gonna do anything, look out for the real. Forget the fake because the fake. The fake don't matter, you know, so that's why I, that's why I would advise people to do get real people around you. Get real people on your team because show as you live, you're going to need each individual one day. If you're trying to rise to a certain level, if you're just trying to be here and just flow on through life, then one day pass on, that's fine. But if you're trying to really do something with your life and, and impact others, you're going to need a solid team. So that's why I advise people to do and, and avoid avoid fake people but also get real people around you and i hope to answer your question stephanie thanks for the thanks for the question number 16 diamond girl 08 trey here's a question for you do you think true love and monogamy and fidelity exist in 2017 and can a person find true love after 50 do you believe there is someone for everyone or some people are just meant to be alone yes i believe in true love and monogamy yes i believe in fidelity and all that because there's someone for each one of us on this planet, you know, whether we want to admit it or not. Some of us find it. Some of us don't. Just like a lot of us uh, end up finding our souls and a lot, of, a lot of us end up losing our souls on this path and this journey that we call life. 
So, yes, I do believe in true love and monogamy, but we have to be in the right position, in the right frame of mind to accept it. Because it don't matter if if you sitting outside your house one day and your soulmate, your true love might be jogging by. And he might have been looking at you for the uh, last six months, but never would say a word. He's secretly admiring you from a distance. And you won't say anything, but he might see you not being a certain, certain way, whereas you're not, as some people say, on their level. And he might just, just say, okay, that person look good. You know, I wonder I wonder who, who those kids are. I wonder who's this. I wonder who's that. You know, so if we can just get the if out the way and pretty much approach each other, you will see if this person is for you or not. Because a lot of times we'll see somebody and we won't speak. We're like, why well, damn, then you be out the store. You'll be like, why well, I ain't say nothing to that person? You know, that person, it just, you know, you get certain chills. Certain people do certain things to you. you. You never know. You might be passing up your soulmate, your true love. You know, as far as monogamy, yes, I mean, certain people is going to be fully committed to a person, even animals. You have certain animals who stay with one one, uh, one spouse to the day they die. They will never copulate or be with any other animal. So it's no reason why humans can't do that, but humans do make everything hard. But at the same time, it does exist. And and if you look for it, you will find, because whatever you look for in this world, you will find And true love after 50, yes. Yes, because you have more people now getting married in their 40s and 50s then at 20s and 30s now, just turn on uh, social media anywhere and you will see uh, weddings with people 50 years old, over 50, over 40. So, yes, you know, and it don't matter about your age. It matters your heart and your mindset because you're only as old as you feel. Just like you have some people who 20 years old, too lazy to get up and go to work. Just like you have people who 60 years old and get up and work. So it's all a free, it's all a state of mind, you know. But yes, true love does exist, monogamy does exist, and fidelity does fidelity does also. And you also said, do you believe there's someone for everyone? Yes, I do. I answered that earlier. So yes. And thank you again uh for the question. Stay blessed. Number 17, uh Demi Demi Beso. I think your name uh De Demi Demi. You are extremely wise, level headed, and clear and concise. Who influenced you the most in your life? Let me see. It's many people that influenced me uh, a lot in my life. Uh, my grandfather, my father, my mom, uh, my, my grandmother, uh, people like Malcolm X, people like Khalid Muhammad, uh, people like George Carlin. You know, I take I take a I take a lot from a lot of people. Uh, Elijah Muhammad, Louis Farrakhan. I, you know, I can take a lot from anybody because that's just how my mind is. You know. I don't take in everything somebody say. I take what I can use for myself because what I can use for myself, you might can't use. And what you can use, I might can't use. So I take a lot of in from everybody. But my my main influence really just being uh, really my uh, my dad and my and my grandfather. I guess that's that's what you would say. And my mom, that's who I learned the most valuable lessons from life, of life from. It's them and also my grandmother. So I hope that answers your questions right there. And uh. Thank you, uh, Demi, and you stay blessed. Number 18, Delana Major. Hey, Trey, what are your thoughts on a Sierra Alexis Sutton case in Baytown, Texas? That case up, uh, I think it was the day before yesterday. And that is one crazy-ass girl to sit up here and cut her boyfriend up and basically um, throw his body in different trash dumpsters over the city. You know, she'll dump some, a head over here. She'll dump an arm over here. She'll dump a torso somewhere else. So she's basically really crazy. But what she done, then tried to go hide out of Louisiana and some people. And I guess they found out what she done. She confessed to him or something like that. And they turned her ass in, which they rightfully should have done so because that is sadistic. If you could sit there and cut somebody up and, and scatter their body parts everywhere, you need to be somewhere locked the hell down because you're no good to no one and I wouldn't trust you around my dog, you know, so that's just what it is right there. That's how I feel. So once again, Delana, thank you for your question and she needs to be locked up because it's, it's not like this guy was really abusing her like that. And if he was, trust me, only thing I do is call the cops, especially in, in uh, Texas or California, they coming. You know, so all that right there basically is is just the evilness coming out. And a lot of people, not only her. So thanks again for the question, Delana. You stay blessed. Number 19, Marlon. Hey, Trey, Nora from Detroit. Did Jose come back? If not, what lesson have you learned? Hell no, Jose ain't come back. I don't think he is going to come back. And I blame y'all for that right there because, you know, he got mad at y'all really for uh, 
how can I say this, uh, for agreeing with me in a lot of ways, even though a lot of y'all didn't, but a lot of y'all didn't make it no better and stuff. And so, like I said, I blame y'all the furious for this right here for Jose not coming back. I wish he would come back, but I'm going to tell you what, I'm, I'm going to replace his ass very damn soon. I'm going to stop even talking about Jose. You know, I'm trying to get him to do a video with me, but hell, you know, he's still pissed off at me right now. But that's all right, though. It's all right. Uh, he'll be back. Another Quaalu. He'll be back. Anyway, I'm just playing about that part. But I hope to answer your question. And uh, thank you also, Marlon. I mean, Nora. Uh, Sylvan B. Trey, how many siblings do you have? And are you the youngest or the oldest? I have three other siblings. It's a total of four of us. And I'm the oldest. I'm the captain. I'm the colonel of the mother effing tank. You know, I was here first. I'm the alpha and I'm the omega of that clan. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I had to be the oldest because I'm not uh, listening to nobody tell me shit, you know So it was just meant for me to be the oldest got uh two brothers and one sister, you know So yeah, they throw it off too, but you know in a good way, but uh, I hope that answers your question. Yeah Thanks again, Sylvan uh, 21 live love laugh every day uh, Monica my 14 year old son is smoking weed I myself smoke weed. I also started at that age. He is doing well in school plays football for his high school and it's respectable and i allow him to smoke his weed so he doesn't have to smoke outside and get into trouble for copping am i wrong for that we have a good relationship he does his chores and he is my youngest son my oldest son is totally different he is 17 years old he doesn't do anything but play video games and watch anime he's on a horror roll on a roll damn i say horror on a roll list on a roll he was on honor roll last year in high school. What you think, Trey? My name is Monica from Baltimore, Maryland. Good question, Monica. And thank you also for that uh, wonderful, <laughs> long statement that you made. Anyway, I like that. But uh, for as your 14-year-old son smoking weed, hell no, he don't need to be smoking no damn weed. And you damn sure don't need to be smoking with him. And I have to say it just like that because you, you asked me the question. So I had to tell you the honest truth because if I was your man, if I was there, I'll be mad at both of your ass. I'm like, ain't no way in hell you finna let him smoke no weed at 14 years old. If his ass wanna go out there and cop some weed and get caught, guess what? Let his ass go out there and get caught and get caught up buying some damn weed. But don't sit up here and and uh contribute to the fact and you know and aid him and obey him in his wrongdoing because no matter what that is wrong it's no different than him just you giving him cigarettes no different than you giving him alcohol you know and if you got a 17 year old and he doesn't do anything he don't i guess the 17 year old doesn't smoke because you say he just uh plays video games and watch anime he's on the honor roll list so if you got a 14 year old who's uh want to smoke weed you got a 17 year old which is of course older than a 14 year old and, and a 17 year old don't want to do anything why is you catering to the 14 year old it's like you should cater more to the 17 year old and i'm not saying that you don't do things for him. all i'm saying is this is that you have to keep this child in his place because what's going to happen because i'm i'm sure you're probably a single mom and i'm not saying they're trying to be funny because no real man is not going to sit there and let their son or stepson even if the child not his at that age smoke weed you know y'all seen up in the house smoking together and shit no it don't work that way so i advise you to stop Make his ass get in them books. And if he want to go out and cop something, if he want to go out there and smoke it, you let him. Because guess what? He going to do it any damn way. Because the moment you run out, the moment you can't provide, because it's a certain thing called being addictive. And once he become addictive, it won't matter then what you do. So trust me, st stop it before it get too out of line. You know, now when he gets a little older, at least 18, yeah. But don't do not do that. Don't do that. Because what, what's going to happen? You're going to... uh. You're going to, you, that's going to lead somewhere else. And I hope you understand what I'm saying. So, you know, the hell with all that. Do not, do not do that with your child. No, I wouldn't give a damn if my child was 25 years old. I'm still not going to smoke with you. You can take your ass out there and smoke. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you're 19. I'm not going to smoke with you. And I'm damn sure I ain't going to smoke with you at 14. And to the 17-year-old, that's very good. He's on the honor roll and that he's just basically being a young kid. Now, the 14-year-old need to be the young kid also and get his workout and do what he need to do, do in school. You say he's uh he plays football. Okay. He doesn't, so he don't go down and get trouble and wrong for that. Okay, that's good. Y'all have a good relationship because you. The reason why you all have a good relationship because you letting him do what the hell he want to do. But the moment you stop, I'm, I'm, let me let me tell you this. Stop smoking weed for him and see if y'all have a good relationship. Uh, put your foot down and and uh do like a lot of moms would do, and see won't y'all have a good relationship because kids that's how kids operate. As long as you keep giving them what they want, they are gonna be good. You know that's that's the whole point. That's why you have a such thing as called what you uh spare the rod, you spoil the child. And I'm not telling you to beat them. I'm telling you to teach them. 
you know, in, in what started is discipline. That's what's wrong with a lot of kids now. They think they sh should post, supposed to do everything a grown person do. So whatever you want to do with that, that's your child. I'm just giving you advice because you asked the question. But if it was me personally, I wouldn't smoke nothing with him. And if he want to go out there and uh, cop and get caught, that's on him. You know, you got you got you got to take that. You got you got to take you got to take that just like anything else. So I hope that'd be a lesson right there. And also let me know uh, how that goes if you try to stop smoking with him also. And to everyone, uh, thank you for the questions. And uh, like I said, I couldn't get to them all. But next week we will do it again and i'll let you all know because i will upload a video that way you all can keep, uh, put uh send your questions back in i think it will be a tuesday if not tuesday it'll be a wednesday but i'm gonna try to do it tuesday and we just do it again but to everybody that uh submitted the question thank you stay blessed and i'm out